Let's talk about the vapor power cycle, where the working fluid is alternately vaporized and condensed. Carnot cycle is the most efficient cycle operating between two specified temperature limits. Thus it is natural to look at the Carnot cycle first as a prospective ideal cycle for vapor power plants. If we could, we would certainly adopt it as the ideal cycle. However, the Carnot cycle is not a suitable model for power cycles. Do your own research on Carnot vapor cycle, and find the defects associated with it. Many of the impracticalities associated with the Carnot cycle can be eliminated, by superheating the steam, in the boiler and condensing it completely in the condenser, as shown schematically on a temperature entropy diagram. This cycle that results is the Rankine cycle, which is the ideal cycle for vapor power plants. Steam is the most common working fluid used in vapor power cycles because of its many desirable characteristics, such as low cost, availability, and high enthalpy of vaporization. Therefore, this video uses steam for a working fluid. The ideal Rankine cycle does not involve any internal irreversibilities and consists of the following four processes. Here, this cycle is executed within the saturation dome of a pure substance. You should have some basic knowledge on the saturation dome. Check the video link in description to relearn about it. First let's talk about the constant pressure curves. These two curves are the constant pressure curves. Upper curve has higher pressure compared to lower curve. State 1 is in saturated liquid state. If heat is added to state 1, temperature would be constant, water will starts to vaporize. But right now we are not adding heat. Instead, we will go to state 2 with zero heat addition, so that entropy change remains constant. Constant entropy means zero heat addition or rejection. State 2 is the compressed liquid state. When heat is added to state 2, temperature increases, but water won't vaporize, until it reach state A. Adding further heat to state A, Vaporize water keeping the temperature constant. Water is completely vaporized at state B, which is in saturated vapor state. Further addition of heat creates steam where temperature increases. Steam at state 3 is superheated vapor. Notice that heat is added to water at state 2 until it reaches state 3. Steam at state 3 has high energy, which can be used to generate mechanical or electrical work. These high energy is utilized when pressure and temperature drops to state 4. It is done with zero heat transfer, that is an isentropic way. State 4, is again in vapor plus liquid state, it is further cooled to state 1, to saturated liquid state and the cycle continues. Vaporizing and condensing water, is done by steady flow devices. Let us again, understand the Rankine cycle using steady flow devices. Water enters the pump, at state 1 as saturated liquid, and is compressed isentropically, to the operating pressure of the boiler. The water temperature increases somewhat during this isentropic compression process. Water enters the boiler, as a compressed liquid at state 2, and leaves as a superheated vapor at state 3. The boiler is basically, a large heat exchanger, where the heat originating from combustion gases, nuclear reactors, or other sources is transferred to the water essentially at constant pressure. The superheated vapor at state 3, enters the turbine, 
where it expands isentropically and produces work by rotating the shaft connected to an electric generator. The pressure and the temperature of steam drop during this process to the values at state 4, where steam enters the condenser. At this state, steam is usually a saturated liquid vapor mixture with a high quality. Steam is condensed at constant pressure in the condenser which is basically a large heat exchanger by rejecting heat to a cooling medium such as a lake, a river, or the atmosphere. Finally, steam leaves the condenser as saturated liquid and enters the pump, completing the cycle. Remembering that, the area under the process curve on a TS diagram represents the heat transfer for internally reversible processes, we see that the area under process curve 2 to 3 represents the heat transfer to the water in the boiler, and the area under the process curve 4 to 1 represents the heat rejected in the condenser. The difference between these two is the network produced during the cycle. All four components associated with the Rankine cycle are steady flow devices, and thus all four processes that make up the Rankine cycle can be analyzed as steady flow processes. Let's assume the turbine a control volume, where mass and energy transfer in and out. The rate form of the energy balance for a control volume is given by but for steady turbine, time rate of change of the energy, contained within the control volume at time t, must be zero. With a proper selection of the control volume and closing is steam, the net kinetic energy of the matter flowing across the boundary is usually small enough to be neglected. The net potential energy of the flowing matter also is typically negligible. Thus, these terms drop out, leaving the power, enthalpy, and heat transfer terms. This equation is obtained when we divide steady equation by mass flow rate. Now using the steady equation in the diagram, you can find work done by any steady devices. The turbine is assumed to be isentropic, which means zero heat. Therefore the work done by turbine is. The pump is also isentropic, and the work done is negative, so. Similarly, the boiler and the condenser do not involve any work. Also the heat transfer out of the condenser and this quantity shall be negative. Solving we get. The network done during the cyclic process is. Finally, the thermal efficiency of the Rankine cycle is determined from.